Okay, good afternoon, everyone. In today's uh, event, we're going to be talking, or in, or in regards to the topic, is understanding cybersecurity maturity, and especially in respect to how business maturity affects uh, cybersecurity maturity. The ability to defend attacks, build information security programs, um, handle all types of cybersecurity risks is really dependent on the business maturity, which affects the cybersecurity maturity um, capabilities uh, of different sorts of security controls, et cetera. So let's not delay any further. We only have about 30 minutes and we're gonna start that process. Okay, so again, we are going to be understanding cybersecurity maturity in respect to business maturity. And again, my name is Edward Millington. I'm the Managing Director for Carryset Global. I'm also the Lead Security Consultant and have over 22 years in the ICT telecommunication field. I would have worked in um, telecoms environment, uh, internet service provider, finance, uh, government, and also in consultancy. The expertise is in the area of project management, IT project management, uh, managed defense and security, malware and attack technologies, uh, policy development, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm also the member for the Strata Institute of Information Security. I'm also a member of the Information System Security Association. Uh, also a member for the Institute of Engineering and Technology uh, and also CISSP certified. So without prevail, let us continue. Now, in respect to cybersecurity maturity, many of you can understand a lot of the processes that we are, or many of the topics that we're seeing here now. So when we look at business operation maturity, what we're already looking at is the benchmarking the process and the capability of governing system components over time. These components can be processes, the organization structure, principles, policies, frameworks, the information, information communication, etc., culture, ethics, behavior, again, within the organization that affects how organizations upset, respond to policies, changes, etc people, skills, and competencies, how they are played within the organization, develop, et cetera. Services, infrastructure, and applications. So those of you who are more familiar within those particular areas, we can definitely see when it comes to policies and frameworks, services and infrastructure and applications. This is also a model of the COVID 2019 framework for governance and management um, objectives. Now, as one can look, when you, when you reach, look, review the picture, you can see as the phase of maturity, which is from left to right, and also from immaturity to sophistication, um, which goes from bottom to top, one can basically see that as the organization or as the business operation mature, you move from more like a haphazard model, um, you have some level of measure activities up to the point where the business is completely agile, uh, innovations in regards to business and so forth, everything is well guided. And majority of organizations sometimes sits between two and three, um, or in general businesses itself, how well they respond to changes within the business environment, et cetera, et cetera. Business maturity and in relation to enterprise risk management. As many of you can understand, if a business is somewhat going to be risk-based control, you're gonna have a situation where all of the risks is accounted for. So for a business to, to be competitive and profitable, responding to clients' needs efficiently and timely, its risk-based abilities increase to deliver the standards, business culture created, it will always be in compliance within operations. Through such a program, and what we are talking about is the risk based program, risk management program. Every feature of the business is evaluated and re evaluated, and risks are appropriately identified for risk management from a holistic point of view. In other words, what we are doing is to look at 
the entire organization, the business institution, and account for all of the risks that can occur from, let's say, from a financial risk, reputational risk, uh, data risk, infrastructure risk, all having to do with any operations. And you account for all hazards, et cetera. You account for all of those risks, prioritize it, categorize it, et cetera. Um, and then you're able to create a program that's going to be able to manage those risks in response to either the board, C-suite, et cetera. The enterprise, Risk management maturity level is, is reflected by the maturity level of the business. In other words, the implementation of an enterprise risk management um, program or system, software, etc. How well that program is implemented and used is reflected on how mature the business is. And this is also driven by the C-suite, executive level, etc. So just to to, to go through a little bit, the enterprise risk management is a methodology that looks at the risk management strategically from the perspective of the entire organization from top to bottom. And it's aimed to identify, assess, uh, and prepare for potential losses, dangers, um, et cetera, uh, to the business, all in regards to minimize um, those things affecting the assets itself, which in this case could be your data, um, systems, services, technology, people, etc. The business maturity and effects on IT and security operations. This particular um, maturity, many of us can definitely understand. We have come into situations where IT may somewhat be uh, versatile in, in this particular way. It does not follow any particular policies, etc. cetera. Um, it's actually driven to provide, uh, well, I can say enable the business uh, to be able to function, to deliver information to customers, services, solutions, etc. cetera. So, right, okay. so in, in terms of the risk itself, one can see as the business uh, matures, you're gonna move from an app how um, situation to a more defined where some businesses is operating at that level to where the business is fully optimized, where uh, risk management is fully integrated. And as you go further into the slides, you're going to understand when you have risk that is fully integrated into the business itself, you're going to see how that affects your cybersecurity program, which is going to be used to defend your organization. In this particular study, we're going to be looking at the business maturity and effects on the IT and security operations. The maturity level of a business affects each business component. And these are highlighted, again, as I mentioned before, the organizations, it's people and process and technology. In other words, how they are managed, how they are operated, what, what programs guide them. The weaker that maturity or the lower that maturity is, the less likely that persons are going to be able to know what they're doing, processes are well controlled, technology is well managed, etc. On average, a business will operate between level one and level two. And if you can look closely, you're going to have some roles defined, you're going to have some capability where some some uh, some metrics, some PKI and SLA stands out. But again, it, it, it does not represent how the business is supposed to operate, especially in today's world where digital transformation is driving forward. You're going to have a lot of solutions being provided, uh, cloud applications being used, cloud uh, being used itself. If you do not have a good gas on the risk within that environment, um, where you operate in, you're going to have a situation where the IT and security operations are going to be somewhat going to be lacking. And when that happens, you're going to have risk within the environment continue to grow. In the next slide, continuing, the lack of good IT governance results from low business maturity, and this also affects the operational levels. If you look at the diagram uh, here, which, which, which is in reference to people, process, technology, business management, or the organization itself. Operations at low maturity can incur levels of security risks, as one can understand if you're not driven by policy, if you do not, if the business does not understand the risks and that's passed on to the teams. Uh, therefore, you can have applications rolled out that have not been tested. You're going to have um, 
devices that may be configured but not configured uh, efficiently and properly. So therefore, you're going to have operational risks is going to be creeping in. And if those risks are not uh, addressed, it does not even, they do not appear within the risk ledger itself. Continuing, the security operations of a business is affected by the operational maturity of IT. That is understandable. If you don't have a good gas on IT, how are you going to account for the vulnerabilities? How are you going to be able to implement necessary security controls? Like, for instance, proper firewalling, uh, proper antivirus solution, are they configured well, et cetera, et cetera. And especially in today's where you have advanced persistent threats uh, from adversaries and other threats, malware, et cetera. You, your, the ability to defend your organization against sophisticated threats um, is very limited. Because security operations is guided by what we call information security programs, which many of you may be familiar with, which is in its maturity due to the business operation maturity level is somewhat defined. It exists, but it's underdeveloped to respond to many of the risks within the environment itself. In other words, um, it might be lacking in how you configure the firewalls, how you're going to procure certain information, the encryption being used, uh, who have access to certain system, is zero trust being deployed, defense in depth, et cetera, et cetera. So the overall capability and maturity program to effect security operations within the environment is somewhat going to be defined, but still very lacking in its, in its capability against security incidences. Uh, compromises, breaches, etc. And as if you look at the model on the side, the further you go into maturity, you're going to find that you're going to have continuous monitoring, continuous innovation in all areas within the security domains itself. Business no risk maturity, IT and cybersecurity risk assessment. Now, critical risk assessment of IT and cybersecurity structures are not carried out or implemented well in the low risk operating businesses. In other words, if your business is going to be fully risk based, for you to understand the risks that you bring to your business, it implies that you must understand where those risks come from within the IT and the cybersecurity area. So when we look at IT, we're going to be looking at the vulnerabilities within software, what applications are being used, is asset, is the asset inventory fully uh, understand and populate the, uh, a SaaS application or a spreadsheet, et cetera. Uh, have you account for what, what particular standard you're following, NIST standard, the ISO standard, especially when it comes to cybersecurity portion. Risk resulting from IT and cybersecurity risk assessments are not integrated. So after you find, or let's say that you bring a consultant, you perform a, a, a use cyber saint to to evaluate the risks within your IT and, and, and cybersecurity environment. So you have all of these uh, alerts or warnings, if you want to put it like that. A lot of the policies are not being applied, et cetera. How is that mitigated? How are the these priorities within the, the, uh, the risks that has been identified? How are they uh, risk managed? So you can have a situation where these risks are, are identified but they cannot be operated on from a holistic way from which an enterprise risk management uh, solution or program, uh, once implemented correctly, will be able to mitigate. The inability to adhere or follow the standards, regulations, complaints also affects the security posture. So again, if in a very low risk environment and your posture is very low, you have a number of risks listed, like uh, as shown in the diagram here, how do you operate on that? If you're unable to mitigate or risk manage those particular type of risks, it means then that you perform uh, an assessment and nothing else was done. So you might have ports that's going to be open. You might have an application that have vulnerabilities that still exist because they have not been patched. Uh, inventories, uh, the, the, the organization has not been, all the equipment has not been most probably in an inventory. A uh, person's not able to follow particular policies when it comes to passwords, et cetera. This is where the security posture can be affected. Business low risk maturity affects some cyber security. Again, the information security program lifecycle helps a business to 
apply the correct policy standards, procedures, etc., cetera, um, in the management of security risks within the environment. So a business is not going to be fully risk-based. You're going to find that the program is not risk-based. It's not going to be able to cater the current risks at that point in time that the organization will face. The definition and the designation of risk-based security controls and the capabilities and maturity resulting from policy standards and frameworks, et cetera, they are under determined. In other words, they cannot be identified. You don't know what the risk would be. So you just install a firewall, you just install an antivirus, you may install some piece of application to do something. But again, it does not follow a particular best practice to whatever standard you're using to the threat intelligence you might have coming into the risk within that industry or geographical location. Cybersecurity and IT risk management programs may be underutilized. You may carry them out, but the results from that uh, uh, exercise is not used to update and continue updating the information security governance program. Threat intelligence inputs are not utilized. In other words, for your particular environment, industry, etc., you need to know what type of threats that your organization may face based on its own operations. If you're a financial institution, if you're going to be a critical infrastructure, you need to understand what type of threats that that business will face. Incident management response is underdeveloped. No tabletop exercise, no program um, is written. Who is responsible? What is the reporting? Um, um, uh, flow that's going to be, the list goes on from there. This type of security resilience is not fully well understood. In other words, if you are hit with a DDoS attack, malware, etc., how is how can system be resilient? Uh, what attack services are going to be are going to be affected, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Hallmarks of a risk operated mature business. If you have a very good mature business understands its risks and putting that risk in every component of whatever program is used to drive in today's world 2020 plus or let's say 2019 2020 plus but 2022 with digital transformation increasing digital trust is needed not only for internal and external clients but you have a situation that you need to understand that risk and build it into your program so for a risk-based operating uh, business or organization or institution, you're going to have executive, C-level, board, et cetera, supporting and communicating the organization risk management strategies, which is, this is very important because this set the tone of how the business manage its whole infrastructure. In other words, in this particular case, how cyber and IT risk is managed to be able to keep the organization safe. The risk management strategy is comprehensive. In other words, is at a high maturity level. Strategies you carry out, the risk is, understand, is understood, and risk treatment is then applied to the risk itself. Risk management activities and processes are standardized to international standards. It's very, this is the very key here. A standard is followed. Risk assessments are carried out with organizational requirements. So you, you have those level of inputs to be able to focus on a very set scope to be able to come back with the risk that could affect, let's say, units, the organization itself, services, etc. For the utilize of threat of threat intelligence and their fees, we did mention that the risk appetite is understood and communicated. In other words, through the executive, they, are, they will understand. If we have a particular type of risk, do we spend money in that particular area? Do we transfer it to insurance? Um, do we accept it, et cetera? IT, OT, cyber risk are part thereof of the information risk management program. That is, is that all areas of the infrastructure is, is fully well understood. And that risk is now built into the program, which means then that your cybersecurity program would have the necessary security, risk-based security controls to take care of, let's say, malware. How, how does malware get into the organization? Is the correct EDR solution is used? Is SDR used? Uh, DLP, et cetera, which is data loss prevention. Effective and efficient security controls are designed and implemented. Cybersecurity, information security, 
cyber and information security risk management programs are instituted and operated. Risk management life cycles is truly understood and organization cultures to one of the risks becomes one of a risk aware nature. So in other words, when you implement an inf a cyber or information security uh, governance program, you're gonna be taking those risk inputs, you're gonna be implementing the necessary security controls through um, standards, policies, policy standards, etc. And through those um, controls, you're gonna be able to protect the environment from from people, process, organization, etc., and this is very important because when the program is fully instituted, one can almost guarantee that the culture is very not only risk aware, but it becomes security aware through awareness programs, through from the executives right from, from the top right down to the bottom, and that ends the presentation today.